Well, it looks like the summer is really blowing by because it is already Saturday afternoon, July the 13th, 2013. You know? Yeah. And, um, I always said the seasons blow by fast and so do the years. Oh, the years. Time keeps on slipping, 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 slipping away. Into the future. Do, do, do. Uh, Who sang that? I don't know. But it's terrible. Yeah, it's but, terrible. but you're, you're, uh, you've always been... Our days upon this earth are numbered. Yeah, but you and I have, have always been uh, men of the future, uh, 21st century men, since, uh, you know... Uh, you were a big, huge Star Trek fan, so you yeah, always... Yeah, but that was in the... Wait a minute, the Star Trek was in the, what, 22nd or 23rd century, you know? Yeah. Yeah, someone's around there. Yeah. Well, it was... Uh, Not the 21st. You know, um, well, somebody... You know, that person asked me a uh, quick question, uh, are you a Star Trek fan or yeah. Star Wars? And I go, Star, Star Trek, Trek, because yeah. I hated Star Wars. I found all the characters in Star Wars to be extremely annoying with stupid voices and I hated that Princess Layla's hel helmet head, helmet hair style. It, it just irked me. You didn't go for and she was a, And she Chewbacca? was annoying. They were all annoying. But there's the, gay, the, the uh, gay robot. How about the uh, those monsters, those robot monsters that were going across the desert there to you know, shooting their laser beams. Yeah. yeah. And three PPO or three PPO. Uh, PPO, yeah. PPO <laughs> is right. See this? The shillelagh is taking a rest. It's on hiatus. Okay. This is an authentic deer antler given to me by our director of IT division for Mega Life 21. Okay. Because he harvested it. Because he is a uh, an avid and expert deer hunter, and uh, maybe it came off of the uh, the venison pot roast that I uh, I made hellfire chili out of. Well, anyway, I'm going to be waving this around with the points facing tea baggers and evil, greedy, wicked um, uh, conservatives. Okay, mm -hmm. which includes. Not only Republicans, but the uh, the blue dog Democrats that have sold out their voters. So let me get directly into my little monologue. The only thing is the shillelagh was so much easier to set down than the antlers. All right, I'll have to put it here. Now, before I start talking. <coughs> Let me formally pipe aboard my co-host and mentor aboard the uh, our progressive liberal starship. Um, welcome to Newsletter Censored, of course. I'm your host, James P. Madonna, and we're coming to you live and pre-recorded by the time you see this show. From the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And here I have Mr. Anonymous. 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 What am I, Popeye? Yeah. Mr. Anonymous. Uh, v for Vendetta Mass. My buddy is over here to my right. And the self portrait, the, oil, uh, the uh, watercolor painting of the person I'm going to pipe aboard. By the way, my co-host and mentor, and the founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. I'm going to pipe him aboard. Speaking of that portrait there, uh, remind Bill, me, Billy Jr. Remind me, yeah, how to get to those paintings because I believe I found the way for you to do it. Well, your friend there, Esmeralda, can't find them either. Because you don't see them either. Uh -huh. You have to go to my profile page. Then you click on the photos that has the f number five on it. If I, if it appears. It should appear. He's talking about Facebook. Photos yeah. with the five. Then, if the 
that those pictures don't show up. Click on albums or album. That's what I always do. And then all the albums will show up. I always click on albums. Now, yes. those four paintings will be there in an untitled album. And I'll it'll show up. I'll try. If you click on the self-portrait, you'll get the other album which has all of the paintings in it. But those four are in a separate album which Facebook took upon itself to do. I did not create it. They take upon themselves to do many things. There's like 80 some paintings in the other album. So maybe they have a limit. I don't know. But that's what they did. Yeah, they're, they're using the aspect of since we're giving you the profile for free and, and our other services for free, we are going to try to control your life a little more we are going a little to more inundate you it's kind of it's advertisements and and whatever you click like a porn whatever site. you click on that you like or that you prefer something all of a sudden you get advertisements you're trapped, baby galore you're tracked even though they tell you you're not well hey the governor uh, Obama says we're not being spied upon yeah but Facebook is tracking you according to your advertising likes your product yeah. likes because the purpose of them of these corporations giving us the freebies is not that they want to be nice and generous it's t it's to bombard us and our profile pages with advertisement and that includes if you use any free website pages yeah. if the company offers you free web pages they put the advertisements right up on top. It's like what the Kodak company did in the beginning with their cameras. They gave you a stinking camera. Kodak. I like and it cost you extra to have them developed. Same thing with your printers. Printers are cheap, but the ink is expensive. The cartridge, the inkjet cartridge costs much more than the printer itself. Isn't that amazing? And then, and nobody staples. Um, what's the other one? Um, um, uh, Walgreens. They don't have the upgraded equipment to recharge the new inkjet cartridges. Mm -hmm. But isn't that weird? How the inkjets the cost inkjet so much more than the printer? And the new inkjet cartridges have no hole in them. You oh. have to make your own hole. Oh, really? Uh. Which means you might break it. Which means the hole might be too. There's a sponge inside, right? Yeah. The hole might be too big, or too small. No, they 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 just want you. It's a racket. It's a racket, baby. It's, it's like it's like um, when when you know if you buy an air purifier or a vacuum cleaner that where you have to buy yeah. their replacement filters and bags from them. Yeah, well. The one I have, the Bissell I have, is bagless. Yeah, I don't know if they have bags these days. No, but who the no, no, no. I have like a HEPA filter. They used to. A HEPA filter, which you have to buy from them. But you don't replace the HEPA filter, you know, once in a blue moon, you know. But this, it's bagless. But at one time, everything required you to buy replacement parts or filters or whatever from them only. And then, of course, they, they got the price jacked up. And they got you by the short here. That's how it was with automobiles in the beginning. Yeah. Oh, by the way. No I, standardization. I screw Kodak. I'm a Fuji man. I like mm -hmm. Fuji Fuji cameras. Mm -hmm. Yes. You traitor. Great quality, huh? You traitor. Yeah. Land of the rising American, sun. Man. No, I don't buy American. It's cheap crap. I, my loyalty is to me wallet. Ooh. Me wallet. All right, let me pipe you aboard. Pipe aboard. All the dogs in the neighborhood. I didn't like the uh, the way I finished it. You think I should do it again? Without the finish, yeah. No, I don't like the way it finished. finish, anyway, let it be. The finish is 180 decibels. No, no, when I went high and when I came down, did it come down in a smooth fashion? Yeah. It did? Actually, the 
wiping the board, I believe, is... Quick? Wait. Wait. No. Like that? Anyway, our, anyway, I'm aboard. Our, our welcome aboard uh, the starship, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, uh, the illustrious co-host and, me so. and mentor and founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. Um, get your subscription with your gift to support this work. But we'll talk about that later. Now, let me let me uh, do the uh, Chisler's Hall of Shame. Okay. <coughs> because oh, of course we're going to have our official commercial voiceover specialist William H. Morrow the third calling later a little after three. Okay, now uh, the first inductees into the um, Chisler's Hall of Shame. They are um, a couple of local. Um, very well established optometrists. Ah. Optometrists that my sister and my brother in law went to have been going for years, and these optometrists flat out, they're scoff laws because they flat out refused to give my sister and her significant other their prescriptions, their prescriptions. By law, I think it's a federal law, you have to give the patient their eye prescription because they paid for the eye exam, so naturally the prescription belongs to them. But anyway, these two jabronis, and I'll use that term loosely, refused to give them their prescription and they argued with them and they got very nasty with my sister and her uh, partner there. and. Uh, it got very vicious, you know, mm. with, the, with the arguments. And the point is, uh, well, um, they they're filing a complaint with the New Jersey State Attorney General's office. They have the form ready to be mailed, or you could do it online, I believe. And uh, shame on you for for bucking the system. You see, I have a feeling these optometrists know that it is the law and they also know that people are buying online to save money that's that's why they're doing it they don't want you to have the prescription so you can go somewhere else and get a cheap pair of glasses but they're charging that they're they're, they're price that's gouging why. the hell out of you that's why oh you want a uh, progressive seamless bifocals that's another hundred dollars you want anti-glare that's another Ooh. god knows what 75 you want the um, high index that's another hundred bucks uh, oh, you want a, you want a new frame? Oh, they're all designer frames. You got to pay another few hundred bucks. Come on, give me a break. What? You want the prescription so you can go to Sears? No, no. So you go online and get it cheap. Well, that too. Why? Look, you you really think that a pair of designer frames is really worth a few hundred bucks, or that anti-glare or or bifocal is worth a hundred dollars more? They're probably making a profit like the fine jewelry industry is. Markup is probably to the, to the hilt. Lot, though, I Sk think, sky high. I think your friends there should have done this requesting their prescriptions by mail so that they have proof of the denial of requests before they went to the, the, the AG. You know, you're a schmuck cookie. Uh, Get it in print. Exactly. Black and white. And Anything you deal with the courts, black and, and white. remember, people, you have a friend, you have one little simple f friend on the keyboard with your computer. It's called PS, print screen, and save it, name it, put it in a folder. You have evidence with the old yeah, print works. screen. And I have used it before in the past. Well, by anyway, the way, I gotta name these people because okay, we name names. By the way, as what? far as the print screen is concerned, yes, it does not. You get the what's on the screen there, but you will not get any picture that's on that particular thing or but, anything. But I had no problem with uh, Windows Vista with Adobe Photoshop. I got a picture in your program. 
when I when I exported it, when I saved it, and when I exported it, it was perfect. From the print screen. But now it's black. From print screen. Well, that's what it does to me too. Black? Yeah. You think it's an XP uh, issue? I don't know what it is. Not an XP. That's Windows 7. You get black too? I get whatever I printed the screen of. But the other night. And when you paste I, it. The other night. Yeah. I had my VHS to DVD. And it had audio, it had a picture on it of Gary Null on a television program with cancer survivors. The picture was on the screen when I printed it on the program. All right? But when I pasted it in paint and etc. and saved it, all it took was the picture of the program's interface, not the picture not, of the television. Not program. the image. No image. It's strange. So it's, it's yeah. something that. Uh, right. Now go and name these. Bands. Okay, the optometrists are Dr. William Cohn, spelled capital C. O H N and his assistant Dave, okay, from Pearl Vision Center uh, at 390 Market Street in Saddlebrook, New Jersey. That's 390 Market Street, and their phone number, these scumbags, is a uh, 201-843-5453. I am not endorsing them for you to go there. I'm just telling you who and where they are where these scofflaws refuse, flat out refuse to give the prescription to my sister and her significant other. Second, that's the first inductee into the Chisler's Hall of Shame. Second inductee is uh, New Jersey Auto Insurance Companies. In this case, um, IFA, I'm sure others are doing it. Uh, my auto insurance went up. I have a clean record. Uh, I, I have the bare minimum on my car, required by law. I called them up and I said, why did my premium go up this year since I have a clean record and I have the bare minimum? And they said to me, well, we have decided to raise the rates. Yeah. Well, what the hell does that mean? I have decided to raise the rates. That means they got greedy. Like if you have no, no legitimate reason yeah, for... Yeah, has nothing to do with the individual. Yeah, right. In other words, there's no there's no real, concrete, solid, legitimate, uh, uh, justifiable reason for raising my premiums. It's just that they felt like doing it. Yeah. But if somebody they just... felt like increasing their profit margin, that's all. No, but if somebody just doesn't feel like paying their, their wildflower honey with the commercial beehives, you should be able to have hens to lay eggs and <coughs> have a little hen house in the yard have vegetables and herbs in both the back and the front yard. That's what owning a home is really about. Having a high stockade fence so you're, you know, if, if you want to jump Swim in, a, nude. if you want to have an outdoor jacuzzi and jump in there with your girlfriend naked and print and lie out there naked, nobody's going to bother you. Neighboring towns, including Allendale and Mahwa, say they have laws against feeding wildlife, but summonses are uncommon. Right. The Rockefellers said they used to spread bird food on the ground. Can do that. But borough officials visited their home and said that was not allowed. In response, they bought the hanging feeder last fall. Hey, I throw stale and moldy bread out on the lawn and, and it's gone. And it's gone, man. I got wild doves and, and uh, all kinds of birds and crows and rob mostly robins. Uh, you know, uh, they eat it all. Nothing goes to waste if I throw something out there. Of course, I'm not going to throw rot, uh, you know, rotted meat out there because I don't want raccoons or and vulture and more skulks, skulks, skunks. Skunk. Oh, I saw every, a every night. I smell skunk. Outside, man, the air well, conditioner. I saw a peculiar skunk the other day come out from under my ramp. A mutated skunk? It was not the black and white type of skunk. It was more white. Albino than, skunk? Yeah, that's probably what it was. And then little really? the stripe down the back was just black, maybe. 
Really? And I think there was some pink on like the top. That's weird. Yeah. Maybe from all this, these chemicals. Maybe the they say during because uh, because of climate change, all these wild animals and critters are going to Changing. slowly start coming into the human populated well, areas. Well, that's already happening. Oh yeah, of course. And that's that's a prophecy of the Bible too. We got we already have um, um, I have hawks across the street from me. Uh, of course, wild rabbits, raccoons, skunks. Um, um, oh, what do you call um, the next town over to have coyotes? Saddlebrook has coyotes wow. in, in the park. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you think you'd see the coyotes <coughs> more like in uh, where the Meadowlands are. They're there too, yeah. But L they're, uh, they're that, uh, black bears are, are, are like 20 minutes away from us. Oh, yeah. You know, Fair black enough. bears, but the th and wild turkey are losing their fear of human presence. There's wild yeah, there's turkey. There's one in, in Washington Township. There's wild turkey on living. the corner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to be like, oh, we got Canada geese all over the place in our town. Oh, yeah, yeah, got them here. It's like, you know, we got geese crossing uh, on the main road. But the point is, pretty soon, what is this? Canada geese, mallard ducks, which I never seen in the past. Um, Monk parakeets. There's well, that that's an invasive species. Yeah, there. well, they're here too. Um, they don't belong here. We'll see. We'll, we're we're going to be. See, uh, I see uh, Florida egrets in the in the river. Um, mm -hmm. Wild turkey will be walking around going. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's incredible. Um, what's going on? Several months later, Rockefeller glanced out the window and saw Egan in his yard clutching a camera. Soon e after, yeah. Egan was the uh, guy from the town. Okay. Soon after, the summons arrived. I feel like we're getting picked on over here, said his wife. To me, it's like what's going to be next. <laughs> I'm going to be walking around my yard in shorts and be told I'm ugly and bringing down property values. Yeah, your ugly legs and knees, your bony knees are bringing down property value. That's what the neighbors bitch about, about people that have vegetables and herbs growing in, in the front yard. You're, you're going to bring down property value. Mind your own damn business. It's like Mrs. Kravitz from Bewitched, right? The nosy neighbor. Yeah. Remember her? You can carry this to ridiculous lengths, she said. Borough officials offered med mediation with neighbors, but Annette Rockefeller wanted no part of it. Police Chief Byron Gay Garney, Gurney said, at least three warnings were issued since February 2012. Two were verbal. A third was in the form of a certified letter the Rockefellers never claim—I mean, never claimed—the chief sent. Complaints have come from more than one neighbor, and have been lodged with police and the health department. There were a lot of animals being attracted. The animals don't recognize the yard line between one house and another. There was a spillover and other neighbors had damage to their gardens from the animals. They were putting in expensive plantings and getting them decimated. Ducks, deer, geese, squirrels, chipmunks, and groundhogs. Oh, that's right, we have groundhogs. Among other animals were being lured to the quiet cul-de-sac. No amphibians. with well manicured split level home. No, oh, yeah, the well manicured is it must be a Jersey thing, a North Jersey thing about these friggin' shrubs and bushes and you know and, 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 and the golf course lawns. Everybody has it, everybody wants it. Except me, I don't care. Several cobblestone lane neighbors declined to comment about the bird feeder. Asked how the Rockefeller's bird feeder differed from the enclosed hanging feeders that are permitted. 
Egan declined to comment. I don't want to get into the technicalities and adjudicating the case on the phone and in the newspaper, he said. Mm -hmm. Egan did say that such summonses are rarely issued. This is the only one I'm aware of in the past year, he said. Right. Carol Tyler, a senior animal control officer, uh -huh at Tyco Animal Control said representatives from her company visited the Rockefeller's home prior to Egan's visits. It is about living peacefully in the neighborhood and keeping a balance between animals, humans, and the laws. The company Yeah, um, this is where we're at, man. I mean, uh, it's one of the perils of paying your bills online and making purchases online just happened to be that uh, you could be hacked. And uh, uh, I know encryption is known to be very safe, uh, but, you know, it's like the Cold War. The crooks find a way, right? to decode the encryption and then they and then they come back and uh, they devise a better encryption system and it goes back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. You know. Same thing with car alarms and security. Now they got it now they got one that they go right up to the door. It's electronic, whatever you do, you're right in the car. It's amazing. Amazing how that how that works. And what was I starting to say before uh, I was starting to bring up a subject? Um, it's um, there are just certain risks, certain perils associated with the um, the advancement of technology in making our lives more convenient and easier there are inherent risks and it just happens to be this is one of the risks is hacking now uh, they want to try to put a stop to China I just remembered what I was going to say mainland China stealing um, US ideas inventions whatever uh, uh, Pentagon re re Secret. reproducing you know stealing an American made an American patented product and, and reproducing it Without any uh, repercussions of uh, from you know. Uh, well, they uh, don't respect patents or intellectual property. No copyrights, intellectual property, patents. Mm -hmm. No, they don't respect that. No. Uh, I happen to think they've gone too far in the United States with with copyright infringement. Yes, because, they have. Because if you use a public domain uh, classical song in a video. YouTube will tell you that it, it belongs to somebody no, else. No, not somebody. Corporation. It belongs to a fucking corporate. Oh, that word makes me so angry. Yeah. It belongs to somebody's. To his years are finished. You know, I think it's 75 years or something. Hey, a song by Mozart. Oh, there he is. Hello. Greetings, Jim. Hey, Hi, William H. Morrow III, our commercial voiceover specialist. Welcome, welcome to Progressive Discussions. All right, how's everyone? Good, good, not bad. So I know, before we start to talk, I know that William H. Morrow III has a very special message concerning our newsletter since 1977, Newsletter Censored. Well, the bottom line is we say each week is the best way to join your organization is to go to www.newslettercensored.com to get your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work. We are living in end times. Times are rough. So you need Newsletter Censored. That's right. That's right, William Morrow. Now, what location are you in now? Oh, I'm, I'm back in Jersey, but South Jersey. Oh, you're in South Jersey right now. Yeah, you're near Atlantic City. Cherry, Cherry Hill area. Oh, Cherry Hills near Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah, 
you 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 given a, a seminar in in Philadelphia this this weekend? Well, earlier I did, yes, yes. But, uh, okay. I'm just relaxing, taking it easy, and talking to you guys. Oh, great! It's great to have you, uh, like always. Uh, we were. I was telling um, Reverend Bill. Oh, is it raining? Looks like it. Oh, it just started raining here. How about that? Uh, uh, I was um, telling Reverend Bill about you and I were joking around about all these fast food advertisements that claim that their hamburger is genuine black Angus and and I and, and, we, and I told you that once meat is ground up it could be any damn thing it be, could be roadkill well we discussed them I think a few weeks back where Linux independently took one random patty from a major top I'll say, I'll say top three fast food hamburger chain one random patty that one patty contains the beef of over 1,000 cattle. Uh. So it's, you're, you know, you're really, you're just, it's a m mismatch. You're just grinding everything up together. And I know everybody will argue, well, so what? It's all being put together. It's meat, it's beef. But it just sounds like, personally to me, it sounds like slop. Yeah, it's, no, like, it's like slopping up all this stuff. Right. It's, it's you know, get it with Angus. How do you know? How do you know what you're being served anywhere? Not just in the fast food joints. True. In the restaurants. You in have the booth. Uh, restaurants, which guys eat certain seafood, booth. lobster, and crabby, whatever, and it's Pollock. And they color it. They yeah. Change. It's po Pollock is a very you really cheap. Don't know what you're getting at time. Pollock is Anywhere. a very is a very cheap cut, and even the bar industry, uh, uh, TGI Fridays, was caught uh, selling customers watered down uh, uh, liquor liquor as top shelf top shelf booze. That's right. That's right. They got they're being they're investigated. All trying little tricks. I I I, not, I, I was wrong. I should have said that. I should not say they're all. No, I think there are certain groups of. I have no way to prove it yet. Uh, who was above, who stand, stay and stand above board. But why are these little tricks to a few dollars here and there? Why cheat your people? Yeah, and, and your customers, your guests, your clients, whatever you term you want to give them. Yeah. Like, uh, well, deregulation. Why do this to people? Deregulation. Well, it's going to be pure greed. Sure, it's pure greed. Deregulation by the conservatives uh, is, prob is probably giving them uh, like a carte blanche. You know, uh, uh, um, uh, the freedom of screwing well, and li lying to the I, consumer. I don't think so because the government, when they do hear about this, they step right in. They take their license away or shut them down for a while. You know, they clean up the rack. Nobody likes this. It's not good. You don't cheat. It's fraud. It's fraud. You're right. You're cheating the consumer, the customer, and it's just wrong. Don't do this. You know, but it's like I think we discussed this. We Ago or a month or so ago, when you're sick with a bladder infection or what have you, a kidney infection, you need, well, you don't need, well, you do need real, pure cranberry juice. It's yes. one item you need. Unsweetened, yeah. But you can't go to the grocery store and buy the basic big name brands. No, they're pasteurized. They are, they are basically, well, not just pasteurized, they're basically colored and flavored. Apple juices. You're not really getting apple. I mean, uh, you're not really getting cranberry juice per se. See, it's pure juice, but there's not that much cranberry in it. Uh, you got corn syrup. Yeah, you're getting your arsenic and your apple juice. Arsenic and apple juice. You got a, a well, high fructose. You get almost every food there is nowadays. See, at certain levels, yeah. they allow. High fructose corn syrup in there. You know, they, they just flavor things and color them. You have different colors. You look at the ingredients for certain things. I can't remember the name, but it's, it's just like a A5. You know, so what is that? Yeah, you, 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 you're, you're showing it on your label as an ingredient. They realize the basic populace because they realize what does that mean? Yeah. So it's an A5. What is that, a color? Is it a poison? Is it good for you or bad for me? I mean, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, so you don't really don't know. Right. Now, uh, w now, William, you you had some notes that you had taken. You wanted to go over certain subjects. Well, a lot of people.
even ignoring the fact that your photograph of the Rockefeller's theater shows a downy woodpecker partaking of the peanuts. <laughs> peanuts are a preferred food of Blue Jays. Hey man, they have good taste. Which also include acorns in their diet. How any animal cracks an acorn is beyond me. Well, the parrots with their, you know, and the eagles with their rounded No, beaks, eagles don't eat no acorns. They're carnivores. They, yeah, but they crush. They crush. Yeah, well, eagles, they pull. They, they, no, they but can't. parrots have they powerful will. beaks. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they can break those because things. Just, but, you know. Woodpecker has a straight beak. A blue jay, as far as I know, has a straight beak. It's amazing how a woodpecker never gets like... Like, like a bad migraine headache or whatever. From, or a splinter. From, from pecking the wood, yeah, you know, like that. I a mean, splinter. Yeah, they, they must have powerful neck muscles too, wo wo woodpeckers. But yeah, woodpeckers, look, peanuts are tasty. That's it, period. They're tasty. So why not, you know, why, you think birds when they're hungry are going to refuse a tasty legume? like a peanut, which is uh, called mani in Spanish, or co cocohuate in, uh, in uh, Incan, you know, or, or Aztec or whatever. That sounded dirty. Cocohuate? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a step breeds like a fish is a human being. Well, they don't have to do that. You see, that's the problem. But if you're they, born, they, they don't care about you. They're not supposed to be doing this at all because we have a constitutional amendment called Roe versus Wade, and which makes uh, 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 abortions legal in every state in the United States. It has these not... These people just don't quit. Because they are religious nuts. Right-wing religious nuts. They are nuts. And these are the same religious nuts that most likely voted in the Republican Congress that we must get rid of in 2014 based on a theology. No evidence, no science, no proof. Everything that comes out of their stupid mouths, Fox News, the Republican Party, is based on an ideology that is not proven. But you idiots out there, you jerks out there, oh, you'll, you'll vote Republican again. I know it. Because of your stupid religious cult. Because it has nothing to do with the Bible. When looking at the pie of total wealth, many people are only concerned about how big their piece is. Yeah. Rather than who made the pie or created the wealth. I maintain that immorality is based on the initiation of force, physical or fraud, most societies hold that murder, robbery, burglary, and fraud are immoral because they initiate force against an innocent victim. Our society is morally inconsistent that we have victimless crimes rather than transferring wealth from those who earned it to those who didn't earn it, I urge us to make our laws moral by stopping this theft, getting rid of victimless crimes, and all government regulation. You can see where this guy, who, who he loves. Government regulation which keeps companies in check and prevents them from uh, criminal action and, and lying and stealing and cheating customers? Something that they got rid of during the 90s and uh, 2000s uh, so that the financial Wall Street could do what they wanted to do and drive us into a financial meltdown. You think this jabroni might... 2007-2008. Really? That's true. You think this jabroni might deserve the, the deer horns in his back? Scourge him. Scourge him! The horns! This bastard.
this rap. And I wonder uh, how financially well off and what tax bracket this this the person gentleman is. lives in Ridgewood. He's got money then. <laughs> I would say he's got money. Well, the the truth is, he has what he has his, and he doesn't care about the have-nots. He just cares about increasing, maintaining, and keeping what he has. His and, piece of the problem. And he likes the idea of uh, having uh, a thousand and one tax loopholes and not paying, you know, taxes. And he don't give a shit about people, uh, children going to bed hungry or living, you know, in squalor or... He doesn't no, care about anybody. No, it's their own fault. Well, that that's, they're lazy. Well, that's an excuse for not helping the poor. Well, that, that like I said, that vein runs all through the Bible. I mean, that's the same thing, isn't it? The wicked have set their sights upon yeah. the poor. Hey, hey, the poor are lazy. I don't want my tax dollars going yeah. to some welfare cheat. And they and they make a big deal out of food stamps. How much money do they think poor people get in food stamps? Uh, you know, I wanted to write a little thing for the uh, local paper. Everybody's saying that food stamps in New Jersey, you get $4.50 a day to live on. What the hell are they talking about? There are people on food stamps that only get $16 a month. What are you talking about $4.50 a, a day? It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a complete it's lie. Crap. It's a complete lie. But the whole thing is. <sighs> oh, these people on food stamps, they go into the grocery store and they buy steaks and they buy lobster and they buy. They don't. They don't get that kind of money, man. Well, let's just say they did. I don't know of any. Why should you be envious of them? Why would you not be thinking in terms such as? You know, I'm glad that poor person there has found the ability to raise himself up so that maybe he won't be poor anymore. And feed Why is that and not feed on their and, ideas? And feed his family, his kids. Yeah. No, they, they don't they, think like that. They don't want to see the little guy be happy and raise his or her standard of living. They want to keep... They want to keep exactly. the, little, the little guy down. They want to keep him down. Because the people with money, nine times out of ten, I bet they own a business. I mean the people with real bucks own a business. And uh, I bet they would just love to employ people for less than minimum wage. Or maybe own slaves. Bring back, bring, bring back slavery again. They or, have this contradiction. Or, or import H-1B visa immigrants. It, they, they have this contradiction. They want to have the people work for nothing for them. Then they want them to buy their product. Can't <laughs> happen. <laughs> Can't happen. Very, very intelligent point, Dr. Bill. How can you purchase the products made by American comp Well, made by outsourced labor, of course. By, from American companies if you do not have the surplus cash to buy it so therefore how can the little guy how can the mainstream put their money back into the economy okay our declaration of independence states that our government was created to secure our inalienable rights of life liberty and the pursuit of happiness for shoot he doesn't say it guarantees oh, happiness. I love prosciutto, yeah. But allows us to pursue it. You could pursue it. That doesn't mean you're going to get it. <laughs> well, what if there are artificial people, corporations, whatever, putting up obstacles in your way yeah, to like, pursue it? Like you need a, uh, a permit or a license to, oh, have, worse than that. to have a business like... Worse than that. Yeah. Let me give you a personal situation that I know of. It happened back in the 60s. There was this gentleman who fancied himself an entrepreneur and at that time was one of the first, one of the first mind you, to start a, uh, what do you call it, a, what do you, uh, a, an adult 
sex uh, 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 publication? Uh, no! Club. 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 A private organization. Yeah. Where, pe where people can join and be a member. Join and be a member and, 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 and get to know people of like mind. Right. They have things in common. In common, yes. Okay. Well, that gentleman was pounced upon yeah. by the conservatives, and they were everywhere in the 60s. Local police, FBI, postal inspectors, etc. And he, by this conservative element, was put out of business. The man could have been rich today because of this puritanical uh, 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 religious right-wing religious nut attitude exactly they had they had no basis for what they did and yet they claim to be the friend of the entrepreneur bullshit all of it friend friend you mean undercover kind of phony friend Infiltration? Well, the fo the friend Infiltrate. to get them elected. Uh, oh. They played the populist uh. to get elected, and then they go, they vote with the elites. I I get it. Interesting. Hypocrisy, baby. It's, it's hypocrisy. Yeah. Oh, incidentally, uh, I just realized this uh, these deer antlers make an excellent back scratcher. Oh my. Interesting. All right. This is the important distinction between those who want an equal piece of the pie versus giving us the liberty to pursue and earn a larger piece of pie. Okay. Sure. I bet somebody could can uh, apply these deer horns. If they know martial arts, we're uh, using the stick fighting, <coughs> which they call escrima, stick fighting. I bet you can uh, you can use these horns as uh, a weapon. Very formidable. Formidable. Speaking of Governor Christie of New Jersey. Oh, you, oh, you have a reading about Balloon Boy. A quiet but enthusiastic crowd greeted the Governor Christie at Ridgewood's annual 4th of July parade. Was he stuffing his face with 4th of July barbecue delights? Um, like hot dog eating contests and hamburgers and... Uh, what are those uh, Italian things with uh, surrounded with the dough? Calzones? Calzones. Yeah, he looks like a calzone. He was eating calzones? <laughs> I love calzones, but you know, I don't have the weight problem Christy has. Christie seated in the back of a large open vehicle. Did you get that? A large, large open vehicle. Open vehicle. <laughs> oh my God! Waved and said, "Have a happy fourth." Have a happy fourth to everyone. Have a happy fourth. Okay. How about a fifth? What about have have a happy all year round and do the right thing? You know, and uh, help people. You know. He pointedly addressed those in the crowd, dressed in military uniform, saying, "Thank you for your service." Yeah, and 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 wishing that this country could do better for the military personnel returning to the United nah, States. Nah. You should have died on the battlefield and not come back here where we have to pay for your disability and all this crap. Or give them a job, a good a job, a good job. Or maybe a place to live instead of being homeless. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, they really respect... Uh, they'll, they'll salute the military personnel... For a good photo op. For a f good photo op, but they won't help the military personnel returning to the United States. No. They'll just salute them and thank them. You know, that's like... Don't a cost them anything to do that. That's like a Republican saying to the poor, well... We're not going to help you in any way, but we'll pray for you. They'll pray. They'll pray for the poor. My my aunt and uncle did, does that. All Republicans do that. We'll pray for you. Yeah. Well, you know what you should ask those people at that time is, who are you going to pray to? 
Well, they're going to pray to God, right? No. The evangelicals... Their idea of God, the, which is the devil. Well, they're, they're, the God that they're worshipping is not the God of the Bible. That's correct. Because the so, God of the Bible tells them to help the poor all the time. That's correct. So their prayers mean nothing and cost them nothing. No, they're hypocrites. That's right. The crowd consisted of many families with children, teenagers, and senior citizens. People sported shirts which pictured the American flag and different patriotic symbols. As I waved to Christie, I felt a deep sense of pride. Here we are, greeting our governor, who had been chosen by the people in a free and honest election. Mm -hmm. Compare that to what is happening in some other countries around the world. We are truly privileged to live in this great country. Now whether we should make it any greater or not, no, I don't think so. Leave it as is. Okay? And, <clears throat> speaking of Mr. Christie, Might as well, we're on a roll. We'll roll him out again. <laughs> roll him out again. <laughs> For the past 46 years that I have known about my adoption at birth, I haven't had much to say on the subject. Now I do. There is legislation pending in Trenton mm -hmm. to help adoptees gain access to their birth records. Mm -hmm. Over the years, I've used the internet, the library newspapers to find my biological parents. Mm -hmm. Without a birth name it proved very difficult. Microfilm of a Jersey City newspaper showed that I was one of two boys born mm -hmm. on the same date at the same hospital. Could I be a twin? Knowing his name published in the paper I looked him up on Ancestry.com and found his parents. Brothers, sisters, grandparents who were born in Ireland. Ireland, yeah. I also looked into my adopted parents' backgrounds and found they were from England and Germany. Now this is crazy. Mm -hmm. I know all the facts about the boy born next to me the doctor who delivered me, the judge who signed the adoption degree. Decree. My ado that's what I say. Decree. My adopted parents, their parents, and everybody connected to my adoption. So I know everything about everybody, but nothing about me. What about me? Does this make any sense? What about Raven? <laughs> Remember that? I encourage Governor Christie to take a long, hard look at this bill if it gets to his desk and sign it. Yeah. I'm tired of waiting. And I'll be 70 years old next year. So what is your opinion on that? Well, uh, you know, uh, it's going to go before Christie and he's going to make a decision then, you know, no. What would prevent him from signing it? I hope, I hope things work out for this gentleman, for the best. Um, so Probably should, shouldn't be something that should even be made yeah. into a law. It should just be there. Anything there about uh, Mr. Snowden? Mr. Snowden. Who is not a traitor like they're trying to make him out to be. He's actually doing mainstream America a favor by what he did, but they're they're demonizing Mr. Snowden, right? Mr. Snowden has lost weight. Yeah. Because he's eaten crap airport food for the last Where three is weeks. Where is he? Is he still in Russia? 
It's still in Moscow Airport. Yeah, I hear the food in which Russia. Which is a no man's land. I hear the, the food in Russia is... <laughs> it's not that wonderful. Well. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, I know somebody who took a vacation one year and went there and uh, he ordered a steak and the steak was like God knows what. Like friggin', uh like they found it in, in the uh, frozen tundra like it was woolly mammoth uh, meat or something. It was... Big. Yeah, it's a very uh, not not uh, not an adventure in uh, in in the in the culinary uh, arts. Let's put it that way. Uh, neither is um, the food of great of the United Kingdom. I hear not exactly an adventure. I forgot what I was going to say. Now. You're talking about Russia, uh, Snowden. This about is Snowden. Snowden. He gave a little interview the other day, uh, and he said that he didn't want anybody to take pictures, cameras, because he doesn't want the U.S. to know what he looks like right about now. Well, I thought his pictures were all over the Internet. Well, that was older ones. Now well, he cut his hair, he shaved, he's skinnier, etc. Well, it, it, if the government lied to... America that you were not being spied upon and 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 if it's a lie don't you think the uh, the American taxpayers that pay their salary have a right to know that uh, they are obviously being spied not. not obviously not I because guess he's not. a criminal to them he's a criminal he leaked he leaked classified information so but there's a higher law in the universe Okay. If someone is doing wrong, especially if it's government, you have a right to bring it forth. Yeah. But There's no law that says you can't do that. It is a law yeah. that you must do that. Well, did you you remember that banner that I posted that says if the government, if you lie to the government, it's a felony. If the government lies to you, it's politics. Exactly. Exactly. If you lie to the government, it's a felony. But they can lie to you. It's right. fine. Because they're elites, they're superior, they're better than you. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, well, it You're goes... Just a voter. It goes back to monetary labeling, you know. You're an elitist, you're filthy rich, you have more value in their eyes than if you are a middle class or a poor citizen. You, they have more value because they say so. Exactly. Because they say so because they can buy their friends and lovers and they, they can buy politicians. So they can buy themselves into power like with Monsanto and things like that. You know, they can well, buy. you see it with uh, Nestle, with uh, Monsanto and the other guy that you just mentioned today. Uh, uh, oh, well, Powell, what the hell yeah, is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. They, they, these elites, they <laughs> believe that, you know, they are in charge. The thing, yeah. things of the world, the resources, yeah. etc., are those, not yours. Yeah. You have no share in them. The wealth of the earth. Yeah. It's, it's supposed to belong to God and be shared equally with, with the population, but... They feel they can own the resources. We're talking about General Mills CEO That's him. Kendall Powell. That's him. And also Grocery Manufacturers Association Vice Chairman Kendall Powell, who wants to keep GMOs off the ingredients list and not let the consumer that's buying their overpriced garbage, you know, yeah. Not letting you know that you're consuming the garbage that you're putting in genetically modified food, plus the sugar, and God knows what else. They don't want you arsenic. To, they don't want you to know. Peanut apple things. juice. But you're the customer. But they don't want you to know it. That you're you're poisoning yourself and paying a lot of money for the cereals, the aver nationally advertised cereals. It's all about profit. Period. You know, I mean, I tell people, never buy, well, the rule of thumb is, 
if a food is if an advertisement for a particular food is seen on TV uh, don't don't consume that food because it's going to be laden with things that you should not be eating if they're if they're advertised on television uh, real healthy foods are not seen on t TV at all yeah, you don't see advertisements for cabbage and carrots and and peas and green beans and do you see do you see uh, um, um, Hodgson Mills or Arrow? Uh, it's been very invigorating. Nothing really, nothing aggravated me today. I was very calm. I didn't have the uh, the infamous black and white Sylvester looking cat named Steve bug me to let him out during the show. I didn't have any, any annoyances whatsoever. Absolutely nothing aggravated me. So I, I, you know, I'm very calm. It, it, this is this is a very uh, unique show because nobody pissed me off, and uh, I feel very re relaxed right now. Um, you know, and it's really uh, nice. It's a nice thing. Uh, so uh, it was it was great, Doctor Bill. Um, so. Um, I was um, talking to a professional wrestler friend of mine who was in the WWE and he's a personal trainer in uh, Boca Raton, Florida and uh, he's an administrator on my fitness group. He, uh, he was telling me that uh, there was a, um, a wrestling federation that went to Nigeria, Africa somewhere and the wrestlers got stiffed. They didn't get paid. Why? You know, like it's, that never happened before. No, of course not. I mean, well, why? Isn't it interesting how certain industries have a habit of attracting the most seedy, sleazy individuals into it? It could be a uh, go-go bar biz business, running a bar. It could be boxing. It could be professional wrestling. It could be like many, many aspects of the entertainment industry. The people that run the industry, you know, record companies, whatever, you know, they, they sign up young talent and they get screwed sure. in, with the contract. And I mean, anything that has to do with entertainment. Actually, cash. Cash businesses. All right, so what you're saying is this same type of sleaziness occurs even outside of the entertainment realm. So what, we, what you're saying is the sleaziness is really inherent to capitalism. <laughs> My friend, have you not read God's economics versus capitalism? I mean, the yes, capitalism, yes. It happens to be on the internet. Uh, censored on demand archive classics Mega Life 21. Google it, and uh, the uh, the new reading is uh, uh, God's Economics. This is the God Project. God's Economics versus Capitalism. Listen to it. Sle capitalism is sleazy. It's 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 done with a wonderful slideshow. Very pretty. Did you see the slideshow, my friend? So anyway, thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Say so long to these people. So long, these people. Must be curtailed. Thank you. Good article. Thank you. Very good article. Thank you. Very well selected. Thank you. Uh, okay. Well, that's it. I think we've given people enough. Remember that commercial when maybe the we were just for the birds. No, this this show was not for the birds. No pun intended. Uh, but um, you know, uh, remember that that commercial when the Frenchman pointed to the Statue of Liberty and says, "Haven't we given America enough?" <laughs> but anyway, thank you for joining us for Progressive.